Hello students, I am Dr. Sachin Kapoor and I uh, will be discussing the topic of fertilization in this lecture. Fertilization or syngamy, it is the fusion of male and female gametes. We will discuss internal fertilization as it happens in case of humans. During sexual intercourse or during copulation, the seminal fluid is deposited in the vagina. Millions of sperms are deposited in vagina. Out of those millions of sperms, only 200 to 250 sperms are capable of reaching near the oocyte. They finally reach near the oocyte, which is waiting in the fallopian tube. Remaining all the sperms, they are destroyed because of different reasons. The acidic pH of the vagina, because sperms, they can tolerate alkaline pH. The pH of the seminal fluid is nearly 7.4. So, the acidic pH of the vagina kills many sperms. The body temperature, the higher temperature of the female body, that also kills many sperms. Phagocytes of the female reproductive tract, they kill the sperms. Sperms do not have any stored food material. They utilize fructose sugar. Whatever little amount of fructose is present in the semen, sperms they utilize that fructose sugar for energy. So, they quickly get exhausted of the energy. They are not surrounded by any protective membrane. Many sperms they die during capacitation also. What is capacitation? Capacitation is the process of final maturity which enables sperms to cause fertilization. Capacitation happens in the female reproductive tract. When the sperms they are moving forward from vagina through cervix into uterus and fallopian tube, they are undergoing capacitation. This process involves coating and decoating of certain proteins from the sperm surface and exchange of ions. Calcium ions play an important role in capacitation. So, the sperms which have undergone capacitation only they are capable of causing fertilization. As in this diagram, I have shown that the oocyte which is released from the ovary, please remember it is not ovum, it is secondary oocyte. Its meiosis is arrested at metaphase 2 state. So, this secondary oocyte is surrounded by so many protective layers. As you can see, zona pellucida, corona radiata and cells of cumulus oophorus. Sperms, they have to remove these uh, membranes which are surrounding the oocyte so that they can finally enter inside the oocyte. As you can see that the oocyte is surrounded by so many sperms, but only one sperm will be able to finally enter into the oocyte. Here I have mentioned the different uh, steps which are involved in fertilization. First is penetration of oocyte by the sperm. Secting, second is activation of oocyte and then third is amphimixis. Let us understand the first step that is penetration of oocyte by the sperm. This diagram shows that the sperms they have reached near the oocyte. They try to penetrate through these layers by drilling action. They drill through this layer and when the sperm makes contact with the zona pellucida, then what happens is acrosome reaction. What is acrosome reaction? The acrosome of the sperm which develops from the Golgi complex can be compared to a modified lysosome. The acrosome has many hydrolytic enzymes which are collectively called sperm lysins. So, during acrosome reaction there is formation of pores in the acrosomal membrane and release of acrosomal contents. The acrosomal contents are sperm lysins, different enzymes which are going to remove the different layers which are surrounding the oocyte. So, sperm lysins, the enzymes are high alluronidase, corona penetrating enzyme CPE, zona lysin. There are other enzymes also, neuraaminidase, acid phosphatase, alkaline phosphatase, cathapsin. These are the important ones. So, what are these? The enzymes which are present in the 
acrosome. So when the sperm establishes a contact with the zona pellucida, how will the sperm penetrate through these layers? By drilling action as I am saying. So the moment it establishes a connection with zona pellucida, acrosome reaction happens. Only those sperms can show acrosome reaction which have already undergone capacitation, right? These enzymes are released. High aluronidase, it acts on high aluronic acid. High aluronic acid is a mucopolysaccharide which holds the cells of the cumulus oophorus together. So, this mucopolysaccharide is holding the cells together and this enzyme will break this and the cells of cumulus oophorus will move away. Corona penetrating enzyme will penetrate the, will allow the sperm to penetrate through the corona layer. This, these are the cells of corona radiata. So, corona penetrating enzyme acts on corona radiata. Next is zona lysin. The zona lysin is going to rupture the zona pellucida. Right? So, that is what is the penetration of oocyte by the sperm which is involving the acrosome reaction. Then the second step comes the activation of the oocyte. Activation of the oocyte involves formation of the reception cone. Now see what is this reception cone? Say this is the oolemma or the plasma membrane of the oocyte. Right? This is uh, zona pellucida sperm we are showing like this right so during activation of oocyte what happens is this oolemma layer this oolemma rises slightly upwards to form the cone of reception that's called reception cone to receive the incoming sperm so, this structure is reception cone, right? Zona pellucida, the pen penetrated by the sperm, the sperm is approaching towards the ulema, ulema rises slightly upwards to form the reception cone. The plasma membrane, that is the ulema, fuses with the membrane of the sperm and the sperm enters into the oocyte. Please remember, in mammals, including humans, entire sperm enters into the oocyte. In certain organisms like echinoderms, sea urchin, only head and the middle piece enters. But in mammals, including humans, entire sperm enters into the oocyte. Sometimes the tail may be left out. Otherwise, the entire sperm enters. Once a sperm has entered into the oocyte, then what other changes occur as a part of activation process? The entry of the sperm activates the enzymes of the oocyte and number two, it also prevents polyspermy that is there happens block to polyspermy. What is polyspermy? It is entry of more than one sperm into the oocyte. This should not happen because this will disturb the chromosome number resulting in triploid condition or maybe some abnormal polypoloid condition such as zygote will not be able to form embryo. So, they should be blocked to the polyspermy. It involves slow block to the polyspermy and fast block to the polyspermy. The fast block to the polyspermy, it is due to change in membrane potential of the ulema. The moment a sperm establishes a connection and enters into the oocyte, the polarity, the plasma membrane of the oocyte that is ulema, there occurs a change in the polarity, there is depolarization, right. So, it is brought about by change in membrane potential of ulema from minus 70 millivolts before sperm entry to plus 30 millivolts after the sperm entry. So, before the sperm entry, the potential is minus 70 millivolts, after the sperm entry, it becomes plus 30 millivolts and new sperms, they cannot enter at this changed potential that is fast block to polyspermy. Now, what is slow block to polyspermy? In slow block to polyspermy, the sperm, it stimulates the endoplasmic reticulum of the oocyte to release calcium ions. These calcium ions then stimulate the cortical granules to fuse with ulema. Cortical granules are present in the oocyte. The cortical granules, they fuse with ulema and they liberate their contents in the perivitelline space. 
Now what these contents will do, they will cause repair of the damaged part of the zona pellucida plus they will also break the bonds which are holding zona pellucida and ulema together. This is what is called cortical granule reaction. So cortical granule reaction and change in membrane potential of ulema that prevents polyspermy. So this is also a part of activation of the oocyte. The third and the last step is amphimixis. Amphimixis is fusion of male and female pronuclei. Now what is pronuclei? See, once a sperm has entered into the oocyte, all other structures of sperm are destroyed by the lysosomes of oocyte except the proximal centriole and the nucleus because proximal centriole is required for the formation of the spindle during cleavage divisions. Sperm has mitochondria also. Those mitochondria, they are destroyed by the lysosomes of the oocyte. So once a sperm has entered, all other structures are destroyed by the lysosomes of the oocyte except the proximal centriole and the nucleus. The nuclear membrane of the nucleus of sperm and ovum starts disappearing and they form pronuclei. The pronuclei, they fuse with one another and the homologous chromosomes, they come to lie side by side at the equatorial plate. This is what is resulting in formation of zygote and completion of the fertilization. So amphimixis is what? Fusion of male and female pronuclei. So we can say that as a result of fertilization, a single celled diploid structure which is called zygote is formed. Two haploid cells, ovum and the female uh, ovum which is the female gamete and the sperm, they are fusing to form a single cell which is diploid that is zygote. Right? So that was about fertilization. One significance of fertilization is that it restores the normal diploid condition. And number two, the entry of sperm stimulates the secondary oocyte to complete its meiosis which is arrested at metaphase 2 stage. So once a sperm has entered, it stimulates the secondary oocyte to complete its meiosis. This is the stage when the second polar body is expelled out and a haploid ovum is formed, the nucleus of which ultimately fuses with the nucleus of the sperm resulting in the formation of the zygote. So that completes the process of fertilization. Thank you.